greeting all. I'm a content of SkyMath. So we we'll continue again with this lesson on the how we can use dimension to find derived equations. How we can use dimension to find derived equation. Because this point is very, very sensitive, but it's very simple. So how can we use derived, how can we use this format, how can we use dimensions to find an equation? This is our purpose of this point, this lesson. So the first point, let's think of an equation or a formula. Let's say we have this periodic formula. Periodic, the periodic time of a simple form. Chemical is given as 2 pi the square root of L over G. Let's say this is the, the, the periodic time of a simple pendulum. We have this T is representing the periodic time, this 2 pi is a dimensionless value, the L is representing the length of the thread, and G is the gravity. So, how we can arrive to this? How can we use dimension to show that this periodic time will give us this relation? So this is our main concept, which is very, very simple and straightforward. So if we start now, let's say if we look at the equation, we can see that the periodic time depends directly to the length. The higher the length, the higher the periodic time. We can as well see the periodic time depends inversely to the gravity. The higher the gravity, the lower the periodic time. Or the lower the gravity, the higher the periodic time. So these two quantities are the factors which determine the periodic time. So how can we have the periodic time to be equal to this? So in this concept, let's say we capture the concept, which is straightforward, you see. So this vessel now, we want to put it in a relation form. We can say the periodic time t is, the periodic time t depends on the length of the string and it also depends on the gravity of the periodic time. So this t depends on these two factors, the length, and G. This is the first point. It might be given a word, word, word statement, so you have to put it in this way. This is the first point you have to capture. Because our focus here is how can we use this to have this? So since this theory term depends on these two quantities, so the next point, since we have this, this proportional symbol, if we remove that, we have the periodic time to be equal to KLG. This is the next point. But in this case, since we are trying to derive this, we have to put constant, and this constant must be powers. So let's say we don't know this constant, we are it to be A, and this other one we are it to be B. These are the steps you have to take note of. First point, you interpret your, your concept to be this way. Second point, you remove this a proportionality. The moment to remove it, you must add the, add the constant. So we have three equals to this. So the other case again, we try to have variables which are powers. So if we add this variable power of L to the power A and G to the power B, if this represents these values as the powers for the quantities, so our target here is how we can find these quantities. So we need the value of A and as well as we also need the value of B. So look for these two values, but mind you, we have to do the dimensions of this value. So since we have to do the dimension of this value, now substituting the dimension of time still maintains to be T, K, the dimension of length still maintained to be A, and the dimension of gravity, which is same as same as same as association due to gravity as Lt minus 2, and we represent our power B. So the next point is physics ends here. What comes next is just algebra, basic algebra, how we can expand such. So now this B is affecting both. So this B the power of this L is 1, so 1 times B gives us L to the power B, and the power of this is minus 2, minus 2 times B gives us minus 2. We have it. But in this case, the next step again, we have K. So if you are multiplying 2 L, we take one of them and we add their power. So A plus B gives us this value, and we maintain this value to be minus 2 B. So moving forward, now we have what we call comparing quantities. So if we compare these dimensions, we compare the dimension of time to time, we compare the dimension of L for L. But if we look at this, we can see there is no L here, but we have L here. So to make it easy, let's just add L to maintain this thing. But looking at this power of T is 1, since there is no L here, so definitely this power is going to be 0. 
We just put it, we just put this L mainly because we have L on the left hand side, on the right hand side. So that's the reason we are getting this L. So equating it, we have K L to the power A plus B and T raised to the power minus 2B. We capture it. So the next point that comes, we compare. We compare comparing powers of quantities. Powers of quantities. So we compare power of quantity. Mostly we use this symbol as comparing. So when we use this symbol, we are compared start with L. We compare L. The power of L here is zero. We write this equals to sine, and the power of L is A plus B. This gives us the first relation. And if we compare again the next quantity, which is T, the power of T here is one. Equated to the power of t is minus 2b. This gives us equation 2. You see. So if we move forward now. We try to find the respective values of both a and b. Let's capture the first equation, which, which is 1 equals to minus 2b. We say from 1 equals to minus 2b. So we find b, we divide both sides by minus 2, both sides by minus 2. This carefully cancel. So we have b now to be equal to minus half. So this is how we have the b to the minus half. So since we need a and b, but we have b now already, so we'll capture this equation again. 0 equals to a plus b. So we have 0 to be a plus b, so minus half. But since we are looking for a, and this sign is minus, when we transpose it, it becomes half equals to a. So therefore, a equals to half. So this gives us the values of a to be half, and that of b to be minus half. You see. But the whole point here is how we can use dimension to derive relations. You see. But we have this equation here, we should not forget it. So we capture this equation t equals to k l to the power a g to the power b. So our target is to substitute the respective values of both a and b. We have a to be half and we have b to be minus half. So we move for t equals to k l to the power half. You know this is negative, so we put it down, going to be g to the power half. So moving forward now, t equals to, since the value is going to be root l all over the square root of g, which gives us k root l all over g. So in simple form now, this relation t equals to k the square root of l all over g, which is the same as this. You see, we are in this k is representing the constant. We are k equals to 2 pi. So the periodic time is going to be 2 pi, the square root of L over G. They just brief on how we can use dimension to derive a relation. So you see, we derive this periodic time. We are, because this periodic time depends on the length and the mass. This is how we can just brief. The same, the same thing is you can follow the same steps to do for any other related question. So now let's move to another question. Let's see how best we can use this dimension to derive an equation. We capture this work problem. Let's say the question says a sphere has a mass of 200 grams, a sphere 200 grams of radius a equals to 4 centimeters, falling vertically through air of density 2 kilograms per meter cube, 2 kilograms per meter cube. At a place where g equals to 10 meters per second square, you see, try to attain a steady velocity of v equals to 25 meters per second. We are given the if the returning force on the sphere is given by this, we are k is a constant, and we are required to use dimensions to find the respective values of p, q, and r and k. Therefore, we can also able to find the respective relation for this. So, if we capture the equation given. We are given F equals to A raised to power B, road raised to power Q, and V raised to power R. So in this case, since we are required to find the constants P, Q, and R, or the powers, so the first point we have to capture, we have to know the dimensions of each of these values. You see. In this case, if we start, what's the dimension of force? Because this F, according to the question, is representing the returning force. And the dimension of force is given as nLt minus t. So this f is representing this equals to, and a we are told that a is representing the radius. And we know the dimension of radius is l raised to power p 
And we consider again this density, this row is representing density, right? This row is representing density, and we have to know the dimension of what? Density. So the dimension of density is given as n l raised to the power minus 3 raised to the power q. And v now is said about, about the speed. The v is representing the velocity of the sphere. So the velocity of the sphere, we add it to the lt minus 1 raised to the power r. So this is how, so the first point here, before you can find the constants, you must be able to know each of the dimensions of the quantities. So having substituting these dimensions, the next point that will come, we try to we try to clear the bracket because physics ends here. What follows next is just basic algebra. So if we expand, we have m l t minus two equated to l to the power b, and this q is affecting both the two terms. We have m to the power q and l to the power minus three q. This r is affecting. We have l to the power r and t to the power minus r. Is what we have. So as it comes next, we try to collect like terms. You see, since we have here L, 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 we take one of them. We say P, since the sign is minus, we say minus 3Q, and the other sign is R, we say plus R. And we take our M, the power of M is Q, and T, the power of T is minus R. This is it. So having this, so the next point again, we try to compare the terms, comparing Comparing powers of terms. So if, if you compare powers of terms, let's start with M. M. The power of M here, you know, is 1. The power of L here is 1. So when you consider the power of M is 1 for the left hand side, for the right hand side, M is Q. So totally, this gives us the value of Q to be 1. Okay. This gives us the value of Q to be 1. So if we move forward again, we take again the dimension of L. Dimension of uh, the power of L here is 1, and the power of L here is P minus 3Q plus R. Let's say this gives us equation 1. And we compare again the power of T. The power of T is minus 2 for the left hand side, equated to the power of T here is minus R. So since we have this minus r, so if we find now minus 2 equals to minus r, we divide both sides minus 1, minus 1, cancel, cancel. So therefore r equals to 2. So we have r to be 2 and q to be 1. So therefore, from 1 equals to this equation p minus 3q plus r. Substituting the respective values we have, p minus 3, q is 1 and plus r is 2. So we have 1 equals to p minus 3 plus 2. We have 1 equals to p minus 3 plus 3 is minus 1. Transposing this, we have 1 plus 1 equals to p. So this implies p equals to what? 2. Therefore, we have p to be 2, we have q to be 1, and r to be 2. These are the respective values of p, q, and r. Because the question says find p. Q and R. But what to means now is Q. How can we go about finding Q? To find Q now, we are given the values of, and to find K, we are given the values of these remaining values. We are given the radius A, which we are going to substitute. We are given the mass of the sphere and other quantities. So we have to capture the original equation given. To say also, also, F equals to a raised to the power P, rho raised to the power Q, and V raised to the power R. Let's have the value. But in this case, this expression can as well be written as A raised to the power P, rho raised to the power Q, and V raised to the power R. So the density is going to be, because we are about to find K, because if the force is directly proportional to this value, so it's going to be k a raised to the rho p and rho raised to the power q and that of v raised to the power r. But in this case, we are required to find k, but we have the values of p, q, and r. p is going to be 2 now, rho q is 1, and r is 2. Let's see.
But we also have force to be expressed as mass times the gravity limit. Equals to, we have k a raised to the power 2, rho to the power 1, rho, big up, rho to the power 1 is same as rho and v squared. So since we need k, we substitute the values there. From the question, we have the mass of the sphere to be 200 grams. But these 200 grams, we have to convert it to kilograms. 200 grams converted to kilograms is going to be 0 0.2 kg. You see? It divided by 1,000. So this mass is going to be 0 0.2 times, we are as well given again the gravity to be minus 10. Huh. So be 10 is for minus 2. So this guy is going to be 10 equals to k, which we are looking for. And a, we are given the radius to be 4 centimeters. But that centimeters must be converted to 0 0.04. So this case is going to be 0 0.04 squared times rho. Now, the density is given as 2 into the velocity is given as 25 meters per second. The reason all square. The reason why we convert this to centimeters because in physics the units must be the same or consistent. Here is centimeters, here is meters per second. So if we use this one, we don't convert it. So we are, we, are, we are not going to have the value, the real value we're supposed to. That gave us the reason to convert this. Similarly, here again the, the mass is grams, you see, and the density here is kilograms. So we have to convert this to kilogram. That gives us a reason to divide by 1,000. So 200 divided by 1,000 is going to give us 0 0.2 kg. So now the units are consistent, they are the same. So now, if we move 0 0.2 times 10, is 0 0.2 times 10 is going to give us, because 0 cancels 0, it remains 2 equals to k times, we express this value. We express this value, possible. So, 0 0.2 times 10 is 2. Now, k, so 0 0.04 square, we have 0 0.04 square. The value is going to be 1, 0 .0, 0 0.0016, 0 0.016 times 25 square is 625, 25 times 25 times 2. This gives us 1, 2, 5, 0. So we have 2 equals to k times, so multiply 1,250 times this, times... So here we have 2. So when multiply 1,250 times 0 .0, 0 0.016, we have 2. So now since we are looking for k, we have 2 equals to k times 2, we have 2k. So divide both sides by 2, divide both sides, this cancels, so therefore k equals to 1. So we have the respective values of P to be 2, Q to be 1, and R to be 2. Therefore, K is 1. So therefore, the relation on F equals to K, A raised to power rho, P, and rho raised to power Q, B raised to power R can as well be simplified. K is 1 times A raised to power P, we calculate to be 2, and Q, we have it to be 1, and V, we have it to be 2. So therefore, the final ratio will be a squared rho v squared. So this is the derived equation. Thank you all and try to subscribe to my YouTube.